um, made it to Rishikesh and loving it. Also, importantly, my cowgirl self found this hat today. <laughs> so, the training is gnarly in the best way. Hot girl summer, here we come. I like never really lose my core strength because so much breath of fire. <laughs> Um, but we did like a real Hatha class, like the last class of the day was Hatha and I'm so excited to just get super strong again. Um, what can I say? Okay, so Sadhana was first this morning, um, at 5 in the morning and the teacher is, is this Hari Priya, like amazing goddess woman that I am so excited to learn from her. Like she's all the things, like she just has like Kali energy, she's got Lakshmi energy, like she is like divine mother, but also like kick your ass if you need it. Um, and so she just like, she teaches true Kundalini yoga. So Yogi Bhajan brought it to the West, which is amazing. But like a lot of the moves, like if you know like PNF, um, moves like where, where you actually just kind of mimic like the, the movements of children or, or the, the adaptation of how you walk. Kundalini yoga is kind of like that. It's like very basic human movements. Um, and then so too basic human movements that we used to do to like turn grain or um, to, we did this one Kriya, it was like Vom, which is the root and like you're like standing up and, and you just make this big wheel with your body as you do the mantra it's just like vom vom and uh so you're like getting really meditative you're also at, like engaging your body uh and it's your weight you're rising with the sun so we're all, we're really rhythmic creatures like we we actually are attuned to the moon and the sun, like in like our, our biorhythms and all that. And so the way that Kundalini accesses your your matrix, it's it's just really you. It's just your art it's just tapping into human potential. And through that potential we get into the the sainthood of, of it of, of reaching divine potential, but it's really like a very natural process. So she teaches like real, real Kundalini and I'm so grateful to learn from her. So it was Sadhana, wait, I have my notes right here. I'm gonna try and just give you guys like a synopsis of, of 10 years of yoga experience. Honestly, 15, I've been teaching for 10 years but I've had a yoga practice for 15. Um, and, and it's so great to come back to the basics because we also have like anatomy class and philosophy class. Um, on top of the, the Kundalini Kriya class, we have meditation and mantra, uh, and we have Hatha in the evening, and I'm forgetting one. Um, but anyways, well, this morning, go back, I should go back to this morning. So it's an eclipse today, so we started our sadhana um, talking about what that means. And so an eclipse is this moment where the sun and the moon are in complete union, and they make this diamond ring around. And so we have this visual, visualization of, you know, Surya is the sun and Chandra is the moon and um, to see them together in union. So I mean, this hasn't happened in a really, really long time. And so for four minutes, there's complete utter stillness. There's, you know, the river stops moving because it's affecting gravity. A bird stopped chirping because it doesn't seem like it's daytime anymore. And so it is, it is a space to come completely in. And I noticed there's a lot of people like doing all these things for the eclipse. And, and it's just, it's interesting because it's, it's a time to really go inward because there's this extra gravitational pull. And so we actually go to sort of our old ways of being. They're gonna, like they call upon us. And so we have to, sh to shed that. And, and so this morning was beautiful to just to really like embody, um, I, I could feel myself kind of going back into old ways of being or, you know, asking the whys. Um, and it, it's, I had that reading with the Vedic cartologist and, and I keep thinking about it. He's like, you, like you're gonna do well on your spiritual path. Like you're meant to be spiritual. And so I've been thinking like ignorance is bliss. Like I, why? Like I, I, I spent my, 20s like sick and then I spent my 20s abstinent and like and I'm like at the peak of my body and and well not really it get, keeps getting better but um and then I'm like well what's and I'm turning 30 this in May and I'm like well like what like why am I 
like why have I, why have I, why is my life so disciplined? Like why is it so, you know, why am I always seeking like God in all things? And, and then I just see other people seemingly having fun and I was kind of feeling sorry for myself. And then this morning I completely shattered that and just being like, I'm so blessed. I'm so, so lucky that like I got sick and, and then had to heal myself. And, and now I'm inspiring people. Like we're, we're here technically like reviewing the um, ashram to work with them in the future. And like, so I'm like, you know, presented as sort of being on the same level as these teachers, which I don't quite agree with, but I'm like, damn, like I worked really hard. Like I'm pretty young to be in this position. And um, before that we had this um, conference and um, I like, they asked me to come up on stage and like gave me flowers and I had to give a speech and like to all these people that are actually native Indians about yoga. And and it was strange cause I was almost insecure. Cause I was like, who am I to say anything at all? Um, but like, I was kind of just uplifted in my spirituality. Like this, like, you know, there was, I was being presented as a spiritual leader. And then, and then after like everyone wanted to talk and meet and like take photos. And I, it was so surreal, but it's also a product of like, of my practice. So let that be encouragement. Like it takes you far really fast. Um, so we did Sabana in the morning time. And then we went into, um, yeah, learning pranayama practices. And we actually came a week late and then we're gonna stay a week after. So um, we missed the opening ceremony and all that, but it's kind of nice because like we actually skipped some of the basics. Um, so we kinda, like, we're just kind of going right into what they're already learning, like week two. Uh, so yeah, we did some, and it's really cool learning from like actual like Indian teachers because they know how to pronounce everything right, which I don't. Uh, and like I'm, I'm kind of like getting the accent a little bit better and I keep finding myself doing the little head nod <laughs> um, I have like very I mirror people like a little bit too easy it's kind of like an empathy thing but um, but then like okay so at the at the conference then we all end up dancing at the end and so I was dancing with all these people and they're like showing me like they're like you know the actual Indian moves and like it was so so fun and so joyful um, I feel like some of those videos are going to end up on the internet and I'm going to be embarrassed, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, we did some Danya meditation, some breathing, and then like how to teach them. Uh, and it's just so much about like witnessing, like every single class we start with alms and you know, a lot of mantras. And, and then there's a point where you just, every single class you just notice, like you just sit in your seat and you stack your spine and you notice your breath and then you move from there. And in the West, like, it's just like, you hurry up, you get into class, there's loud music, you work out, and like, there's like maybe a two minute Savasana, and it's just not the way it's supposed to be. Um, so we did like a lot of Mula Bon practices because they're kind of doing the theme of the root chakra, but I'm on my moon, so technically you're not supposed to pull the root, but um, for me, like, I'm, I'm the seasoned practice practitioner, so I kind of decide if I should pull my root or not. Um, so I couldn't help it. I, I just love it. So I was pulling my root. But technically when you're on your moon, FYI, ladies, like that's apana energy, which is the energy where it, the, it's gravity's energy. So it's pulling things down. It's supposed to be coming out of you. So when you pull your, um, root and your anus and your perineum, like you're, you're lifting the energy up. And, um, so it, it's kind of stops the flow, but I, it's like my day two or three, so I just went for it. But it, and it was so great. Plus, we've been driving a lot, and I haven't been exactly feeling my my legs. Um, so that was really, really great practice. We did like a whole Ladara Kriya uh, with like blossom and, and meditation, and it was it was lovely. Um, so and, and like part of the reason that you do these practices you can imagine like when you're not, when you're just not practicing you have like two five maybe five percent of your body is using the pranic capacity but then when you move the chakras you get them to 10 or 20 percent 
So that Kundalini awakening that people experience, it's sort of like all your chakras have 10 to 20, 10 to 20, 10 to 20, and then you're lifting, 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 and then you you reach that like that feeling of of, of the, the God molecule, like your your pineal and matches with the rhythms of the universe, and you're just sitting in your seat and it opens sort of what's really there, the cosmic window, the cosmic gate to truth, to, to really seeing. Um, but like, it's great to be in these courses because they're really breaking it down like anatomically and like energetically with like sort of a more of a linear logical way of seeing it. Uh, and, and it's so, it's very embodied. It's, we did a lot of body stuff. Like it's not just talking ethers. Um, and for me, like, I don't always visit my, my lower, my base chakras, my animal chakras. And, um, with, uh, uh, Hari Priya, she's, she's really pulling out like sort of the, the Kali energy. And like, we were doing a lot of like, ha, 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 ha. And like really like feeling and pulsing and like, and like lifting and, and like moving that energy. And it is good for me, like to really feel like sort of my animal body and, and to be in these like sort of very deeply human movements that are really connecting you to our, your ancestors because yeah, like we're not really churning butter, you know, or, 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 uh, kneading dough or, or, you know, pulling grass, like, and so it's that in combination with feeling what's really in the body. Like, I know I suppress anger, like most women, we're not, you know, allowed to exactly express that or frustration or even like sort of the shamanic energy and like my sexual energy. Like I, I mean, I always lift it up to my heart, but I don't always feel it in my, my root. And so today it was like, it was, I was angry. I was just like, you know, things have been done to my temple that, um, and to in many women and, and women before me and, and men too, that are not justified. Um, and I, you know, it's weird being a spiritual person. And when, you know, you're 20 and um, I, I mean, I have sort of like a, like a kind of a, like a body type that's been really kind of given like a, how do I say this? I don't, I don't mean it in a vain way, but it's almost like society has been tricked. Um, just cause like I am curvy and, and, um, and I am friendly and sweet and, and people really take it the wrong way. And, um, and so I was getting like allowing myself to actually like feel like that is not right. Like it's not justified. And, um, and, and, you know, I get in these weird situations with the people that I date where I want to like, I, I do, I do so much to help their healing journey. And I'm so, so patient. I was just like, fuck that. Like, like, no, like a, a king chooses and like, like chooses and goes for it and, and makes, makes, makes it known. Like sometimes when people are too forthcoming, it, it makes me run away. But like, just being like, fuck that. Like, like for my sisters, for the next girl, for, for me, like I needed to clear all this energy where I'm just so like overly sensitive, like overly patient. And, and I'm just like, no, nah, like. Like what is for you knows it, and 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 sh like, yeah, like I'm like calling in my own king energy. That's how I felt. I was like, N I don't, I don't have space anymore for lackluster or wishy washy. Like I know that I am really something unique, like like the diamond in the eclipse. Like we all are. And one of my, one this gal that I really like that is um ben chen she just kundalini and she's really making it um a, a fire business in, in a good way and um she's she posted something and it was like oh i've been with my partner in the same house for six months and she was like get like she's like get you a man that lets you turn the third bedroom into a shrine and i've always been so insecure like like people are gonna think i'm so weird that like it's so important to me to like wake up in the morning and pray and and a couple times a day I have to sing limo songs and my yoga practice is really disciplined and I always felt like that's something I'd almost hide or or like I would like warm up to some of the people that I've dated in, in the past 
Um, and, and then the other thing is I don't even start by saying like I teach yoga or do massage therapy because it also just has this connotation that's sexual and not spiritual. And it's, it's just not fair and it's just not re the reality of it. And it's so, it's so sacred to me. It is, it is my everything. Like I, I move on honestly from, from men really fast because uh, I, I know what I'm looking for and and it, it's got to honor like the spirituality but I always felt like I had to like warm up to it or or I would just be a fucking nun like it, and I'm fine with that like if I had to be I'm not fine with that I decided I really do not want that path <laughs> but like nonetheless like yeah so that's what I worked through this morning and it was really really liberating I'm probably talking from my energy and I'm like a little bit fast and I'm a little bit like kind of steamy a little fiery but like also like it's that's great that's where i need to be right now i'll probably soften tomorrow um and anyways so after that we did the modifications class and nobody was volunteering to do the headstands um but i just got there and i am definitely like a teacher's pet so i was like don't raise your hand <laughs> um but then nobody was volunteering so that was kind of fun to like learn all the different ways that you can modify headstands and um and yeah, I'm just like, I was like, oh, my core, I love you. Because <laughs> uh, the teacher was like talking for so long while I was upside down. <laughs> but it was great. And uh, he called it king pose. And then everyone was like, you mean queen pose? And that was fun. <laughs> um, and then we learned a little bit more about like the glands. And, and um, in everything in yoga, it's about creation, understanding, and destruction. So basically anytime you're feeling really good, it's almost like sh for sure that like there's going to be destruction, but every single time that you, you think you know, you're going to find out you don't know. And whenever you feel like you're at the, in the pits, you're surely going to rise. Like that is the nature of reality. So in that light, it's all about like being in the now, like just enjoying exactly where you're at because cycles are going to cycle. And sometimes like when we're blissed, we don't want it to go. We don't want to leave. And that's, you know, that's when you take the next hit. That's when you take the next ecstasy. Like you don't want to leave that feeling. And then when we're down, we think that it's never going to end. And, and then we keep ourselves down longer than we need to because when we're down, it's teaching us something. And we can get out of it like way faster if we, if we center and relax and think, oh, thank you, God, for this lesson. Like... I get to learn, I get to improve, I get to be, you know, a better human being from this. So th that's what we kind of went through. Then we went to philosophy today and the, the, the teacher is like an act, like a, like a hippie, like a yoga, like dirt, messy hair, like um, 70s stash, Patanjabi type, like super cool guy. Uh, yeah, I was really into that class. We and we talked a little bit like just like the Hatha, um, so like Ha's sun and Ta's moon, uh, Gaiksurya and Chandra. There's so many words in yoga that means sun and moon because it's the masculine and feminine. That's what we're here to do. We're supposed to balance the Ida and the Pingala, um, and and that's that's what union is. People think like like I hashtag sacred union, and then some, like I had noticed that when when you click that like. People are talking about all these relationships and it's like, no, it's, it's your inner Ida and Pingala. It's your inner essence. Um, and when we look outside for that essence, then it, it's it's bound to take you through that destruction cycle and to, to be so attached to what we think we, we want. And especially that I feel like that happens a lot and when people are seeking relationship dynamics. Uh, me too, I get it. Seriously, I get it. But that oneness is it's about what happens on the inside we have to access our feminine and masculine men need to cry women need to step up like we are there's a little man inside of me and there's a little woman inside of every man right like we're all the things uh well, we went to talk about the the five element theory which i love i will i can there's always something to deepen about these things too like i never ever think that you know one thing that my teacher this morning said that really struck, struck me, she's like, I can't teach you Kundalini. I can teach you Kriya and Pranayama and Mantra, etc., etc. But the Kundalini is experienced. The Kundalini is experienced and you have to experience it for yourself. And that's why none of this is a religion. It never was supposed to be a religion. Hindus practice it, Buddhists practice it, Christian mystics practice it, but 
It is an experience of your energy body. It is an experience of your divine temple reaching and, and lowering and being with the earth. And that's what I find a lot of people practicing Kundalini are not embodied. It's not on the earth. You see, it's like, fin, like, fin, what's the word? Like, fanaticalized or something. I can't remember. But like, you just see people like shaking or like on the ground and it's like, oh, and, and like, that's not what it is. It's not what you're like. That's, that's, that's sensation. There you go. Sensationalism. Or it's this like tantric seduction bullshit and like that's again it's a sales pitch it's manipulation and it yeah it's not that it is a connection to your inner self and so you move all this energy but like run for the hills if you see someone doing that like shit or do energy work with me and get an actual release because it'll be soft and beautiful and you'll probably cry but and and like also i can get into the spine you can reach the auric field and um, you can move like spinal waves. Like I can, I've, I've experienced that before myself and I've done it to people, but it's never going to be like this convulsion exorcist shit. It's, it's not. So anyways, I shouldn't say shouldn't cause you never know, but what you see in the internet is probably not accurate. So you're connecting with your true self. Um, and one thing that, the teacher said that was really cool in the philosophy classes the mind is the psychic extension of your soul functioning through the five senses in your neurology one more time the mind is a psychic extension of your soul functioning through the five senses and your neurology the mind is not in the body that's why when you think of someone like you could hear their voice or you look at somebody and then they look at you like our minds are all connected like they're they're wavelengths the mind is, is sound and color and waves. So we really are all connected in this infinite universe. Distance doesn't really matter to the psyche. The psyche can travel 8 million miles or something. It can go out to space. And that's why the planets can affect you. That's why the eclipse is affecting us. That's why Neptune does things to my Scorpio ass. Like, <laughs> it's all there. Then we learned anatomy, which I is a little bit of my love language. Like I'm like, talk to me about the bones. Like, <laughs> uh, so that was really fun, but I won't bore you with that. What else did we learn? That was kind of mostly the day. And yeah, it was so lovely. And so to compact yoga into, you know, just as a small little ending here, it's you, you do all the asana, you do the physical postures. You sit and breathe. You move the energy so you can be in the stillness. And when you enter in the stillness, there's a whole internal landscape. I call it the psychic desert. There's a whole beyond beyond that you can tap into. And you get little glimpses, and I'm not saying every time I close my eyes, I'm going to infinity. But I will say that practicing for a long time, and, and I will continue to practice, it just gets deeper, and you just get more sensitive to the subtle body. You can feel so much, and you can also learn how to stop feeling other people's things, which I'm working on. Um, and that's also why like, we gotta be protective of, going back to what I was kind of saying in the beginning, like being protective of who you let into your field because as you increase your sensitivity, your other people's karmas can sort of leak into you. Like have you ever talked to someone and they leave you feeling really drained? Or sometimes you talk to someone and they leave you feeling uplifted? So no matter what, our energies are, are engaging with one another. And so it's, it's sort of your own responsibility to make sure that your energy is, is uplifting and is lovely and is beautiful because it's affecting everyone around you. And so if you wanna make the world a better place, we do have to be disciplined a little bit. We have to take time every day to check in, to check in with your own energy and, and make sure that you're, you're synergizing, that you are aware that today and the next day and the next day, that you are a being on this sacred, beautiful planet. And that being that you are is is beyond what meets the eye 
It's beyond what meets the senses. Your senses are your gateway to feel and experience this earth. But all that we are is more than this temple. And so the nod, the sound current, the way that we connect to our souls, everything is sound and light, right? So the, you hearing me right now, you're hearing the sound current. You're hearing my energetic, energetic makeup. You're hearing my soul. And, and my soul can have filters on it. Like, you know, we can have a sore throat. We can have a chalk out of balance. We can, which I sh I'm learning to not say chalk out of balance. They're really never actually out of balance. They're always spinning and they're always beautiful and they're always full of life. But it's more like, are we aware? Are we remembering? And so I'll end it there because April's coming back in. But to connect to the sound current, to connect to the nod, to connect to your soul signature. It's really the process of like listening and doing your mantras or whatever, but like really like just once a day, just quieting yourself enough to hear your internal guidance, to hear your internal voice. And so my intention on this trip, and I think I can speak for April too, is that we're really learning how to like tap into our own divinity our own inner voice and like make that so unstoppable and keep that so sacred and and do everything we can to protect that because that's what guides us to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing so if you're interested on more of that i am starting my pod so here's another plug email me or send me a dm on kundalini rodeo and we can do all sorts of psychic shit and we can do all sorts of physical things and breathe and just be in the magic and yeah we're definitely going to be doing some yoga retreats so i'm so looking forward to the future i feel like such a business boss but also like a little angel <laughs> priestess so here is to another wonderful day and um we'll just end with this on um Peace.